everybody, it's us from the Bookmobile. I'm Sarah. I'm Kate. And today we're going to sing some songs, read a really good story, and do a really fun craft. So why don't we start off with some songs? Yeah. Kate, which one should we sing? Hmm. How about the Itsy Bitsy Spider? Oh, I love that one. Okay. All right. Do you guys have your spiders with you? All right, ready? The Itsy Bitsy, Bitsy Spider went up the water spout. Down came the rain and washed the spider out. Out came the sun and dried up all the rain. And the itsy bitsy spider went up the spout again. Wow, I love that song. That's a really good one. Should we sing another song? Yeah, what do you think? Hmm. Well, what about the great big spider? That is my favorite. Oh, I'm glad. All right, ready? Do you have your great big spider ready? The, the great big spider went up the water spout. Down came the rain and washed the spider out. Out came the sun and dried up all the rain. And the great big spider went up the spout again. Ah, oh, what a good song. Yeah. Such a classic. All right, do you think it's time to read a story and maybe do a craft? That sounds great. All right, awesome. This, uh, today we're going to be reading Miss Rumpheus by Barbara Cooney, so stay tuned. Hello everyone, here we are at our craft corner. We're going to be doing some really fun crafts today. We're going to be making flowers out of egg cartons. So to get started, all you need is to find an egg carton, and we're going to rip it apart so all these little bumps turn into individual pieces. So we'll... Tear it apart. You've got this nice round part that's going to be the center of your flower. So after that, we'll get a nice colorful piece of construction paper. Find some markers to color your egg carton with, and we'll get decorating. All right. So Sarah, what colors are you using to decorate your egg carton? Um, I think I'm going to center, uh, the center is going to be brown. And then I think I'm gonna do a green outside because why not? Yeah, that sounds good. Good color combination. Thank you, I thought so. So you can use a couple different colors. You could choose to do one color. You can make little patterns or designs. It's really all up to you. So once you've got your egg carton piece colored, we're gonna take some Elmer's glue and glue it to your piece of construction paper. So we'll just turn it over to the cupped side and add a little glue wherever the carton touches the paper. Then we'll just stick it down nice and firmly onto the construction paper. How are you doing, Sarah? This glue is a little hard to come out, but it'll be fine. All right. All right. So once you've got your egg carton glued down, we're gonna take another piece of construction paper and we're gonna cut it into strips. And these are gonna be the flower petals. So you can cut them to any length. They could be long, they can be short. If you need some inspiration, you can always go outside to your garden and see what kind of flowers you like. I'm going to make short flower petals. Are you going to do short or long today, sir? I'll probably do pretty long, I think. I think like, that'll look good. Thank you. Like, kind of like this long. Oh, I like that. So it's long and thin. Yeah. Nice. Mine are going to be short and wide. So once you've got a couple of petals cut, you're gonna take your construction paper, put a little glue on the petal, and go ahead and glue that down right next to the egg carton. And we're gonna do the same thing all the way around the whole entire egg carton piece. All 
All right, so now I have all my petals surrounding the egg carton piece. And what do you think this flower is missing, sir? Hmm. Well, there's no stem. I think we should add one. All right. So you can take your markers again and go ahead and color a stem on your construction paper. It could be thin, fat, whatever you think. So we'll do a nice stem. Then we'll add some leaves. I think my flower is going to be sitting on some grass. Is it okay that my petals go off the page? That's definitely okay. All right, awesome. You have all your petals glued down? Yep. I'm just about to make my stem. I'm going to make it a little wavy. Oh, I like that. Thank you. It's like a flower bending towards the sun. Maybe it is. All right, and once you have your stem and your leaves colored, you'll end up with this nice flower for springtime. How fun is that? <laughs> all right. That's great. Let's see it, sir. Well, I wasn't able to color all of it, but that's okay. That looks great. Thanks. It was fun. So that's how you make a flower out of an egg carton. <laughs> Miss Rumphius, Story and Pictures by Barbara Cooney. The lupine lady lives in a small house overlooking the sea. In between the rocks around her house grow blue and purple and rose-colored flowers. The lupine lady is little and old, but she has not always been that way. I know. She is my great aunt and she told me so. Once upon a time, she was a little girl named Alice who lived by the sea. From the front stoop, she could see the wharf and the bristling mass of tall ships. Many years ago, her grandfather had come to America on a large sailing ship. Now he worked in the shop at the bottom of the house, making figureheads for prows of ships and carving Indians out of wood to put in front of cigar stores. For Alice's grandfather was an artist. He painted pictures too of sailing ships in places across the sea. When he was very busy, Alice helped him put in the skies. In the evening, Alice sat on her grandfather's knee and listened to his stories of faraway places. When he had finished, Alice would say, when I grow up, I too will go to faraway places. And when I grow old, I too will live beside the sea. That is all very well, little Alice, said her grandfather, but there is a third thing you must do. What is that? Alice asked. You must do something to make the world more beautiful, said her grandfather. All right, said Alice but she did not know what that could be. In the meantime, Alice got up wa and washed her face and ate porridge for breakfast. She went to school and came home and did her homework. And pretty soon, she was grown up. Then my great aunt Alice set out to do the three things she had told her grandfather she was going to do. She left home and went to live in another city far from the sea in the salt air. There she worked in a library, dusting books and keeping them from getting mixed up and helping people find the ones they wanted. Some of the books told her about faraway places. People called her Miss Rumphius now. Sometimes she went to the conservatory in the middle of the park. When she stepped inside on a wintry day, the warm, moist air wrapped itself around her and the sweet smell of jasmine filled her nose. This is almost like a tropical isle, said Miss Rumphius, but not quite. So Miss Rumphius went to a real tropical island where people kept cockatoos and monkeys as pets. She walked on long beaches, picking up beautiful shells. One day she met Bapa Raja, king of a fishing village. You must be tired, he said. Come into my house and rest. So Miss Rumphius went in and met the Baba Raja's wife. The Bapa Raja fetched himself fetched a green coconut and s cut a slice off the top so that Miss Rumphius could drink the coconut water inside. Before she left, the Bapa Raja gave her a beautiful mother of pearl shell on which he had painted a bird of paradise in the words, you will always remain in my heart. 
You will always remain in mine, too, said Miss Rumpheus. My great aunt, Miss Alice Rumpheus, climbed tall mountains where the snow never melted. She went through jungles and across deserts. She saw lions playing and kangaroos jumping. And everywhere she made friends she would never forget. Finally, she came to the land of the Lotus Eaters, and there, getting off a camel, she hurt her back. What a foolish thing to do, said Miss Rumpheus. Well, I certainly have seen faraway places. Maybe it is time to find my place by the sea. And it was, and she did. From the porch of her new house, Miss Rumpheus watched the sun come up. She watched it cross the heavens and sparkle on the water, and she saw it set in the glory in the evening. She started a little garden among the rocks that surrounded her house, and she planted a few flower seeds in the stony ground. Miss Rumpheus was almost perfectly happy. But there is still one more thing I have to do, she said. I have to do something to make the world more beautiful. But what? The world's already pretty nice, she thought, looking out over the ocean. The next spring, Miss Rumpheus was not very well. Her back was bothering her again, and she had to stay in bed most of the time. The flowers she had planted in the summer before had come up and bloomed in spite of the stony ground. She could see them from her bedroom window, blue and purple and rose-colored. Lupines, said Miss Rumpheus with satisfaction. I have always loved lupines the best. I wish I could plant more seeds this summer so that I could still have more flowers next year. But she was not able to. After a hard winter, spring came. And Miss Rumpheus was feeling much better. Now she could take walks again. One afternoon, she started to go up and over the hill where she had not been in a long time. I don't believe my eyes, she cried when she got to the top. For there on the other side of the hill was a large patch of blue and purple and rose-colored lupines. It was the wind, she said as she knelt in delight. It was the wind that brought the seeds from my garden here, and the birds must have helped. Then Miss Rumpheus had a wonderful idea. She hurried home and got out her seed catalogs. She sent off to the very best seed house for five bushels of lupine seed. All that summer, Miss Rumpheus, her pockets full of seeds, wandered over fields and headlands sowing lupines. She scattered seeds along the highways and down the country lanes. She flung handfuls of them around the schoolhouse in back of the church. She tossed them into hollows and along stone walls. Her back didn't hurt her anymore. Now some people called her that crazy old lady. The next spring, there were lupines everywhere. Fields and hillsides were covered with blue and purple and rose-colored flowers. They bloomed along the highways and down the lanes. Bright patches lay around the schoolhouse and back of the church. Down in the hollows and along the stone walls grew the beautiful flowers. Miss Rumpheus had done the third, the most difficult thing of all. My great aunt Alice, Miss Rumpheus, is very old now. Her hair is very white. Every year there are more and more lupines. Now they call her the lupine lady. Sometimes my friends stand with me outside her gate, curious to see the old, old lady who planted the fields of lupines. When she invites us in, they come slowly. They think she is the oldest woman in the world. Often she tells us stories of faraway places. When I grow up, I tell her, I too will go to faraway places and come home to live by the sea. That is all very well, little Alice, says my aunt. But there is a third thing you must do. What is that, I ask? You must do something to make the world more beautiful. All right, I say. But I do not know yet what that can be. The end. Did you guys enjoy reading about Miss Rumpheus and how she planted seeds all over the world? Because I sure did. I did too. I love growing things in my garden. Yeah. And May is the perfect month to start planting, right? That's right. Yeah. So maybe you can make your own garden. And that craft it was so much fun. That's right. You can make your own flowers without even planting seeds. <laughs> how 
How cool is that? <laughs> well, um, what do we have going on in the bookmobile this month? I think it's our last route day of, or it's our, our last month of our route. Uh, so keep an eye out, and we're also going to be doing some summer programming. That's right. Yeah. So keep an ear out. <laughs> All right. Until next time. Bye.